So, so I've met two moms, right? And, and actually, my mom met when I was five. Uh, so it was me and, and Terry. So she was my mom for a long time, and then she met Jackie. So it's it's my tall mom, Terry, and my short mom, Jackie. Uh, tall Terry and Jackie. Uh, and, and that's how you know they've been. They they had a commitment ceremony in 1996 when their relationship was illegal in a dozen states, and not just because they were having freaky sex, but literally because homosexuality was illegal in a dozen states in 1996. Uh, sometimes we forget that how far we've come, and even just the last 16 years. And at the end of the day, I think we all understand that love is what makes a family. Uh, and and when, when it comes to raising kids, the single most important factor is not you know, how, many you know, how many parents you have, the gender of that parent or parents, their sexual orientation. What matters most is whether or not your parents or parents is or are willing to put in you know, the blood, sweat, toil, and tears that it takes to sculpt little hellions into well-adjusted young adults. Right. That's what matters. And so when we have these conversations, I think it's important that we, we don't let the other side scare us. Because that's what they try to do, right? When we talk about the politics of fear and division, this isn't just an abstract idea. This is a reality that we hear every day. I remember hearing about it in 2004, the Republican convention, uh, sitting in my mom's bedroom watching the television and just Mitt Romney, for God's sake, standing up and saying all of this really scary stuff about but what it meant to have gay parents or to not have a mom and a dad. And I remember being being confused and frustrated and and and, and scared. I, I I wondered if maybe the government would come and take my parents away and, or, and put me into a home that had a mom and a dad if it was so important. Maybe that was going to be what would happen to me. And so when we have these conversations, I think it is incredibly important that we, that we, we don't let the other side, you know, scare us into to retaliation. Because that's what they're trying to do. I remember watching, uh, how many folks watched the, the dinner table debate with Brian Brown and Dan Savage? A couple people watched that? It's this really, really insightful debate where Dan Savage sits down with the, the executive director of this virulent anti-gay group, and they just talk for an hour. And during that hour, the guy on the other side claimed victimization. I counted 28 times. He's the victim, right? The, the guy who can get married in all 50 states to, you know, whoever, you know, he's attracted to. Uh, this is the victim, right? Whereas Dan Savage, you can only get married in six states. It's somehow the bully, somehow the aggressor. And, and if we're not careful, they will succeed in, in painting our community in this way, even though we make up like 5% of the population, right? We are somehow the bullies because we want equal treatment. And the reason that they can say this is because they feel entitled not to equal treatment, but to greater treatment, not equal status, but greater status. They feel superior to us, feel superior. They feel like their love is better than gay love. They, they're the kind of people who think that you can separate this, right? That straight love is different from gay love, it's different from interracial love, that, that love can somehow be broken down and rationalized and understood. And frankly, I think it is the people who think that love can be understood who are the least capable of doing so. So when you listen to these people try to, to break it down and, and, and pit us against each other, we really can't let them do that. We have to be you know, conscious of the fact of who we are and, and the fact that at the end of the day, we're all Americans and we're all in this together. And that was the radical idea, right, of, of the founding of this country, the self-determination, the idea that we would trust both each other and ourselves to govern this country as one person, our, our national model out of many one. And that's something very, very special. Now we have to remember that we've had conversations about marriage for a long time, and a long time ago, marriage was an agreement between two men. Women were property. But we have evolved in our understanding of humanity then, we are evolving in our understanding of humanity today, and that is why I am so proud to support the President.